in order to assure that we're getting the, the best oak we really can for Jordan wines, Rob Davis actually travels to France and visits the forest and attends the, the auctions where the logs are actually auctioned off and he bids for logs and then has one of our coopers create barrels from the logs that he's purchased. And we tend to source from eight to nine different cooperages. One of the reasons is it gives us a, a variety of flavors that lends to complexity in the wine. Uh, but also we tend to embrace the cooperages that utilize old world techniques and have been at it for a while. And they tend to give us year in and year out what we're looking for. When I get the message that Nadalia Cooperage in Calistoga is producing our barrels, I like to go over and actually observe the production of our barrels, kind of get an idea of the, the continuity, uh, quality of construction, and the consistency of the toast levels, and just really get an idea of what to expect when the barrels arrive several weeks later. Before the wood can be constructed into a barrel, it's essential that it is seasoned for two to three years uh, before it meets the cooperage. One of the reasons is that that helps to leach out some of the more raw and recognizably woody flavors, but also allows microbes to access the early wood or the, the grain. And what that does is then allow the, the wine to seep in there and extract those most delicious extratives that we like, the vanillin and so forth. Once the seasoning is done, the start of construction of a barrel is that the staves are joined and planed, then they are assembled by the master cooper, which is called raising the barrel, where the staves are actually held by hand into a hoop and the form of the barrel is constructed as he adds a stave, up to about 30 staves, plus or minus, every barrel is different, but using a pattern of thick, thin, medium, thick, thin, medium, so that the the stresses are dispersed equally around. Once the barrel is raised, it's actually in the shape of a, of a flower where there's a circle on one end and all the stave tips are pointing out towards the other like petals. The flower petals are then formed with a, with a cable drawn in to form the other end of the barrel. Now the barrel is symmetrical on both ends. Then the hoops are added. That's the time that the barrel is then toasted. At Nadalier, toasted right over an oak wood fire. There are many methods of toasting. Uh, we happen to like the oak fire. It seems to, to be slow and purposeful and penetrate the wood in such a way that it develops the flavors we want rather than degrading them or creating over toasty flavors, caramelization and so forth, flavors that might obscure our fruit. The barrel is toasted. It can be rolled out, the bung hole drilled, and the, the head started to be shaped and formed. Each barrel is ever so slightly different, so the head has to be formed for that particular barrel. Once the barrel is, is complete, the heads are fitted and so forth, it's sanded, and then brought over to the, the QC department. It needs to pass test one. Test one, does it hold liquid? And with the wood being a natural product, not all of them do right away, and sometimes they need patching. And that, that process basically is pressurizing the barrel with a little bit of warm water in it, looking for the leaks, and then doing an, another master cooper's job, which is patching grain leaks. Once the QC is effectively finished at the cooperage, that's when my quality control part starts. As the barrels arrive here, uh, we, we check them just initially for the consistency of toast level, but also check them again for their water tightness. Amazingly though, a barrel can be watertight and not wine tight because the wine is less dense than water. One thing that people don't really realize um, is that the barrels really do soak up a significant amount of wine, about six bottles worth. And so one of the things that we notice is that the very first fill gives a lot of the toasty and new barrel and more, a lot more barrel impact components. The second fill is really my favorite where it delivers more of the vanillin and, um, and to me the most delicious and well-balanced flavors. Then the third fill, what we use so that we don't have too much oak flavor, we still want to have the entire vintage barrel aged, but the, the third fill is what we call a neutral fill, and we use that for evaluating vineyard blocks and so forth, but it also just allows the wine the elegance of barrel aging without over-oaking.